right, it's time to rank another soundtrack, and this time I'm going to be doing Metroid on the NES. As usual, I'm just doing the stage themes, although there are no separate stages in Metroid. They do play different songs for different areas on the map, so I'm going to be covering all of those. I kind of contemplated whether or not to do the Mother Brain Room, because it's essentially a boss battle theme, but it does play throughout the whole time you're in this room, so I decided to count that, as well as the escape at the end. I'll preface this like I always do, that this list is just strictly my opinion. It's all arbitrary. Feel free to leave your comments agreeing or disagreeing with my choices. I encourage discussion and debate. So without any further ado, let's get on with the list. Number 8, Mother Brain's Room. This is one of those songs that's more about mood than melody. It's just ambiance and bubbly noises. It serves its purpose for the game, but isn't much to listen to. Number 7, Ridley's Hideout. It's got a very jarring and repetitious lead, which never ends at any point throughout the whole song. The bass just kinda is what it is, but it at least attempts to distract you from the rest of the arrangement. There is a key change, but it's just a slightly different variation to the same thing you've been listening to the whole time. Number 6, Torian. This is very similar to Ridley's Hideout in that it has a repetitive, jarring sequence with a basic bass riff, and that's about it. And while I don't love this song by any stretch of the imagination, I do like it more than Ridley's Hideout, just because of the way it's mixed. The jarring part I mentioned is low in the mix, while the bass is out front, along with the cascading blips and bloops. It's a good example of how important the mixing process is, and it's especially noticeable when you listen to these songs right up against each other. Number 5, Escape. There are a few different sections, but the first couple verses are the same riff four times in each measure, with only the bass making any kind of variation. The second half of the song does get more interesting though. It has this triumphant vibe to it that makes it sound more like you already escaped, as opposed to the urgency you'd be feeling in an escape situation, which actually makes the bland first half of the song a better fit for the stage of the game, but whatever, I like this other section more. Speaking of the game itself, you don't really get to hear this song properly in the game because of the beeping you hear from the alarm throughout. So it's a much better listening experience outside of the game. Number 4, Secret Area. Similar to Mother Brain's Room, this song is more about fitting in with the stage of the game than anything else. In this case, the segue area is in between each of the game's areas. But this is at least melodic. Even if it has a robotic phone dialing kind of sound, which ultimately helps with the good fit with these areas, because some of them have elevators. The only other sound you hear are these noises that sound kind of like the blips and bloops in Torian, but they don't last as long. So while there's not a lot to the song, it does have a cool foreboding atmosphere, and all that empty space makes for a nice change of pace. Number 3, Norfair. The arrangement is pretty simple. All the instruments are pretty much following the same hit patterns, with the exception of the bass and hi-hats. Until it gets to the second half of the loop, then the lead starts going off and adding some sprinkles of variation to it, but it doesn't veer away from the pattern all that much. It's such a weirdly timed song too. It's mostly in 3-4, which isn't too strange, but in some spots, the rest lasts for an extra beat so the time signature switches over to a 4-4 four four for that one measure, but it doesn't do that every time either. So although that's very subtle, it's still enough of a change to throw you off, even if you don't realize why, which complements the sparse arrangement so well. Number 2, Craid's Hideout. This one is similar to Escape in the sense that you've got a recurring riff that repeats, but after four measures, it throws in a different chord progression for a couple measures, and then changes up the pattern completely before going into a solo that ends the loop. What keeps this one interesting is the tone. It's very eerie, and the lack of percussion helps in this sense. 
notes decay nicely, and I just love that solo at the end, especially the coda at the end of the loop where the bass holds the note down. Number one, Brinstar. The lead riff is, I don't want to say repetitive, but it's very similar all the way throughout the loop, but it evolves the whole time. It starts out very simple with one note in each measure, and it starts adding more and more to it as it goes. So by the time we're at the end of the loop, it sounds like something completely different, which is really noticeable once the loop ends and goes back to the beginning. It's a swift change in gears. And it's not the same riff the whole time either. There's different variations of the same riff that mutates throughout the song. It has a cool march beat along with a bass riff that matches it, which I think is what gives the song its energy and drive. The lead riff would have sounded so lifeless without the rhythm section doing its thing. So this is a great example of why it's important for all phases of the song to work together. So that's it for this soundtrack. Let's recap the list. Number eight, Mother Brain's Room. Number seven, Ridley's Hideout. Number six, Torian. Number five, Escape. Number four, Secret Area. Number three, Norfair. Number two, Craig's Hideout. And number one, Brinstar. So what did you think of the list? What do you agree with, disagree with it? Feel free to leave your opinions and thoughts in the comments. That'll do it for this one. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.